Hello everyone, my name is Johnny Shaley and welcome back to Velocity Launch Systems. Today we'll be going through and taking a look at my new thrust vector controlled model rocket. By new, I mean it's my first one. This is still the same one that I had almost a year ago. Um, but I'm finally getting back into it, I'm finally making some more updates to it, and I'm really excited to show you guys some of those updates I've made. As for future projects, um, for now I'll be sticking with this one as far as thrust vector control goes. Pretty soon I hope to have this on a static fire test. I plan to have a static fire test back in October, however, due to me not being able to get the motors that I needed, um, that has been postponed until just now, so it's been... It's been a journey waiting for these motors, but I finally have them, and so it looks like the static fire will be coming up. Um, but until then, let's take a look at some of the updates I've made since last August. For those of you who don't know the project already, uh, what I'm making is a thrust vector controlled model rocket using 3D printed components and Arduino electronics. And so to my left here, I have the rocket's flight computer, which is fully custom made using um, an Arduino Nano and a um, BNO 055. IMU and a couple of sensors and push buttons and um, some people were wondering what this thing at the top was this is a uh, breadboard power dispersal unit and so it you can plug in your 9 volt here and it just powers the whole uh, flight computer so we'll get into that later but uh, for now I'm just going over what the project is um, here I have the actual rocket and in here is the thrust vector control mount and that can actuate 5 degrees plus or minus on the X and Y axis and I'll remove that from the rocket and show you guys. And then right here, this is new since uh, to the channel. This is the um, the first revision of the launch pad. So it can be bolted down to uh, or screwed down to a piece of wood or metal, whatever the launch pad will be made out of. And then it's got these four um, these four supports. And then right here is a, and it, it's a little you have to put it on a certain way. But there's um, a 3D printed uh, mount. Um, fixed to the airframe of the rocket and then there's a couple of these pins on the launch pad and then that just fixes in like that so that way when it's sitting on the launch pad it's upright um, thrust vector control doesn't really work well with a rail it's possible but it's um, a system like this is much more preferred because um, a rail works great for a fixed motor mount but with thrust vector control it could offset some of the um, some of the sensors in it and it could you know, force it to not have a, um, a clean exit, uh, rail exit. So something like this is what you want for a launch pad. So we already went over the uh, flight computer, but now I'm going to talk about it a little bit more in depth. And so this is run on an Arduino Nano with the BNO055 uh, inertial measurement unit, which detects gyroscopic uh, orientation and acceleration in uh, X, Y, and Z axis. And a couple of the extra things that I put on here, is uh, an LED, a blue LED, so I can see how the rocket's doing. I have a transistor here, and that is used for parachute deployment. And I have a push button, so I can turn on thrust vector control, or turn on um, a system sequence, so if I were to start the thrust um, the static fire test, I would push this button, and it would begin the countdown. I have, right here, two servo outputs for the X and Y axis on the thrust vector control mount. Uh, a passive or an active buzzer so uh, I can hear the rocket while it's inside the airframe or I can hear the flight computer while it's inside the airframe and I can make sure that all the systems are running in a certain beep sequence like a lot of uh, altimeters they have a beep sequence um, which is how you get like altitude I'll do something similar where I'll have this and it'll be like a like a beep or like a countdown just so I can he make sure that the uh, flight computer is still functioning it's powered properly everything is going smoothly while it's hard to uh, visually see the components working. Um, and then if we look at the back here, I have uh, soldered uh, wire connections for most of the connections, and then a couple of the um, components that I added on after I did all the uh, soldered connections, they had, they just have wires. And then the whole thing's on a proto board. And uh, yeah, so this is the first revision. I will be doing a second revision with with this barometric pressure sensor and so currently the rocket is unable to calculate the altitude of the rocket and so with this barometric pressure sensor it'll be able to determine the apogee of the rocket 
and then all of this is useless or this is useless and any of the data is useless without a way to store the data because you can't store the data you can only print it live on the nano and um, only when it's plugged into a computer so what I need to do is redo the computer the flight computer with a um, an SD card breakout or a teensy which I, I have a teensy 3.5 right here. Um, I'm using this for another project, but I'm going to be working with this TNC 3.5. As you can see, it has a built-in SD card slot, so you can store data to it, but um, I'll be working with this, and I'll be seeing if this is um, something that I want to incorporate on my next flight computer. Um, so this is, not the, this is not the flight computer I'm going to use on my first launch, um, but I'll definitely be using this on the static fire test, and I might be scrapping it for parts for my next flight computer build. So here we have the thrust vector control mount. You can see it is all 3D printed with two 9 gram servos, um, plastic geared. And so the way the system works is this bracket right here is mounted. So these are these uh, four holes that we saw on the exterior earlier. And then this servo is fixed to this. So that servo never moves. But there is um, um, a linkage stopper here with a push rod. And that's how it is connected. I'll get it to focus, um, and so, and then this lower part, which can move, is fixed to this bracket by two screws, one on each side, and so this entire system can move like this, so that's your x-axis, and if you look down here, there's another set of screws, so that's another pivot point for the motor, um, and then this can move like this on the inside, so you get full... Uh, uh, movement by the thrust vector control mount, and then this one is attached by the. Uh, it's not one to focus. It has the um, the servo. There we go. It has the servo, the push rod, and the linkage stopper there. And the linkage stopper goes directly into the motor mount, and then the motor goes uh, right in here, and that is how it is controlled. And then the uh, servo leads. Right, like this, and this goes up and plugs into the flight computer. And so, the main things that have changed, and for those of you who watched my last video, this was the thrust vector control mount that I went over. And so you can see there's a couple uh, couple differences. Uh, main difference being there's no servos in this one, um, and it's not connected, obviously. But um, you can see that in this one, there's a linkage stopper, and in this one, there's not. And then this one also goes out, giving more room for this uh, motor mount to go over. Whereas this one kind of just it want it, it there would there would be no room for um, a link stopper on this, so it has to go out. And then a couple other changes. Um, for example, this uh, motor tube was scaled down. It did not need to be that long. Um, it only created issues being that long, so I shortened the motor tube, um, as well as adjusted some of these um, these uh, push rods. So those are the uh, changes I've made to the thrust vector control mount since the, uh, the last video I made. Also, I, I adjusted the top here. This is actually a big change. The um, Previously, this top mounting bracket with the servo, it could be uh, moved back and forth a lot. And so I added another uh, kind of piece right here, and it goes back a little bit. So this servo is not moving anywhere, whereas here it's kind of, it bends a lot, and there's barely anything holding up this top bracket, so it's, it's basically not even doing anything. Um, it would snap if I gave it any more force. So that was another big thing that I changed. Um, and also, I think I was able to get just the smallest bit more movement overall with this um, thrust vector control mount as opposed to this one. So this one has a, a little higher range uh, than this one. So that's the uh, thrust vector control mount. Probably the part that I've talked the least about on the channel is the recovery method and uh, payload section of the rocket, seeing there's not a lot to it. Uh, but seeing it's a very important part of the rocket, I will show that. And so I have these four uh, screws mounting in a bracket that separates the altimeter section, which is here, to the pressurized section with the parachute. And so, if I 
if you look at the top here, I have the nose cone, and that is fixed um, from a friction fit with this uh, masking tape. And then if I pull this out, you see the parachute, and then right there is the piston. And so that is added since my first update video, which was back in June of 2020. And that was, the, that was, I think, the last time that I went over this section of the rocket. So I've added this uh, piston, piston ejection system. So it is, it is fixed with the shock cord. And so that is responsible for pushing out the 20, I believe it's, I believe it's a 20 inch parachute by Apogee, um, with a uh, metal swivel right there. Um, and I believe this is one eighth thick, uh, one eighth inch thick, um, shock cord also. And, um, 3D printed nose cone with a bracket there. And so that's the recovery system. Uh, let's take a look at the mounting bracket because that was a big thing that went through about four stages of development just to get it right. So let's take a look at that. So looking at the uh, mounting bracket for the shock cord, we have a uh, uh, one eighth inch U-bolt, a metal U-bolt right here, which is fixed to here. I also have this sticker of um, uh, just of a mission, of a space shuttle mission. So I thought that would just be a cool addition. It looks, looks kind of cool. Um, so it's got this metal bracket on the bottom, which is important because it disperses the weight between here and here. And so that way it's not going to snap the 3D printed. And this is also printed with high infills, so it's not, so the stress that's put on here isn't going to, isn't going to snap this. These two, um, little wells right here, that is where the black powder charges go. So not the black powder, just the charges. And so the wires can be fed through um, the little holes in the bottom here, right here and right there, which can be um, connected to the uh, flight computer. So currently, I am the flight computer is only built to do one charge, but I plan on having two, um, primary and a backup, because um, it's always smart to have a backup, seeing we have expensive stuff on board, and having a second charge go off is is good and then i have this piece of masking tape going around uh for extra uh just securing when i'm constructing the rocket so that concludes the uh, recovery section so that's it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed and i plan on posting a couple more videos i know i've said that in the past but i'm finally gotten to the point where since i have motors coming and i'm getting a little better with the um with the electronics and stuff and I'm excited to see where this project's going to go. So, um, kind of like, like I did this time last year, the project's really going to start picking up. Um, and I really do hope to have a launch soon. Um, even sooner, the static fire test with the F-15 um, rocket motors, uh, which should be arriving soon. Uh, I received confirmation from, from the place that I ordered it back in October that they should be arriving very soon. And so, hopefully within the next month, I'll be able to get that static fire out. Um, as for other tests, I plan on doing a test with the black powder charges to make sure that the piston ejection system and flight computer can all work together to deploy that parachute on time and, um, you know, without, without any issues. Because we want to make sure that when we do launch this, um, and when it, if or when it does fail, um, uh, we have a way to recover the electronics on board. And then flight computer will be updated with a couple of things. Um, which I might make a video on, depending on how many changes I make. It might not be worth making an entire video about it. Um, but if it is, I'll keep you updated on that. As for the thrust vector control mount, it seems like it's in a good spot, um, for the time being. Um, until I do the static fire test, I won't really know if it's, um, capable of, you know, doing everything it needs to do, like actuating under rocket thrust and, um, a couple stuff like that. But I don't see the thrust vector control mount needing a complete redesign. Um, but we'll, we won't, we won't really know until the static fire test. And so that concludes this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the update and I will do my best to keep new videos coming. As for other projects that I'm working on, um, there's a link in the description for my school's aeronautics channel. And so I've been building rockets for my school for the past four years now, and we're making a really cool project this year. It's a level two high power rocket. It's roughly nine feet long, five inches in diameter, and it's carrying, I have it right here, uh, this rover. So this is the payload for that rocket. So this is going inside the rocket. Um, and this is an autonomous rover. It'll collect moisture data. So link in the description for that. It's called Creekview Aeronautics. 
um, Creekview High School Aeronautics, and then, so, we'll be uploading there, I've already uploaded, like, three times on there within the past, like, week, so, I'll be uploading constantly there, and that's an exciting project, so I would take a look at that, um, if you're into rocket stuff other than thrust vector control, and so, like I said, this concludes the video, hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you all later, bye.